Welcome everybody to this afternoon's session. My name is Ben Lee. I'm the account manager for Tableau for all the Coca-Cola companies. Very proud to have the team here today to share with you their progression and use of Tableau. I think you'll see, like many of you, they started slow and then gained momentum with adoption. Uh, it's really impacted the way that their sales teams look at data in the field and has made them quite successful. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Kevin King and his team to share their story. Kevin, please give him a warm welcome. I like Hey, 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 hey. I did all my dancing last night with Sir Mix-a-Lot, so I'm going to save us. So, so Ben, one quick question for you. Did you check in the license and make sure we don't have anybody from Pepsi in here? Anybody from Pepsi? Are you from Pepsi? I have a bodyguard right here with the iPad. He's going to escort you out. I'm just joking. Hey, as Ben said, I'm Kevin King, Director of Reporting and Analytics for Coke Consolidated, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. I ran into many of you and you said, hey, are you guys in Atlanta? We're actually not. We're located in Charlotte. And we'll explain kind of the difference between us and the apparent company. But I'm excited to be here. It is really a pleasure to be able to share our journey into BI. Um, about two years ago, I had the opportunity to be promoted to this role. And so I was extremely excited. But then after about 10 minutes, I got a little worried. I got worried because I had a unique, a bit, a, a, I had a unique responsibility where I've been in three or four analytical roles that actually report to me now. And so when I thought about it, we're called analysts, but the reality is that we're really report generators. We had all these different systems where we would go and get all this data and try to put it in a Microsoft Excel. And that was great. I mean, we did V lookups, H lookups, S lookups. We don't even have that, but we tried it, right? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure a lot of people in this room have been there. Management's asking for immediate responses to data and analytics, what is going on in the market. Um, and so we really didn't have the capabilities to be able to do that. At the same time, I think everybody's probably used to the changes in the organization. So about every year, we have some type of organizational change. And the reality was the last change when I got into this role was that instead of going to our 52 branches throughout our territory, the guys in the field or the ladies in the field, they will wake up. And instead of going to the branches, they will wake up, get in the car. Well, they got dressed first, but then they would get in the car. And they would start their day. They would go directly into the market. And so they didn't have time to really go, um, go to the Excel dashboards that we had built, that we had put on SharePoint, and get that data. We needed the ability to give them the data right then. And so that was a huge need for an organization. At the same time, we became mobile. So we rolled out about 800 iPads throughout the organization. And that was for our delivery team, and that was for our sales team. And so they had iPads to be able to have conversations with the customers in the market. Or as they're out riding in the truck, coaching and training, which is what leadership is supposed to do, they needed the ability to be able to see the results. And they couldn't do that. Or they could. We did adapt Power Pivot, but the only way you could use Power Pivot was through SharePoint. So I have this guy who doesn't like technology at all, right? We have a sales force that have been there 10, 15, 20 years. They don't like change. And so for them to go to SharePoint to get data, well, first you've got to find how to get to it in SharePoint. That's the first problem. Um, but when they find the dashboards, they actually had to go and understand the data. And so it was a major gap for the organization. We never really taught BI. We didn't have an enterprise data warehouse at that, that point. Um, so we had a lot of needs. And so what I want to talk to you guys about and what the team is going to talk to you guys about today is that journey. We've now embraced BI. Our leadership has embraced BI. We're investing in the tools to be a world-class organization. And we want to share that with you today. Okay? So at this point, allow me to introduce the team, as I like to call it, the A-team. 
So we have Brian Franklin. Brian is our business data architect. That's a very fancy name. At the end of the day, Brian is that liaison. We never, ever talked to ISS before. We had a need, we would say, go do it. We never had any dialogue. Now we're having dialogue, and that's why you see Brian on the stage today. Brian's going to tell you a little bit more about consolidating who we are as a company, but he's also going to share with you how we transitioned to the EDW and why we chose Tableau as a solution for the organization. Linda Kroger. Linda is our senior business analyst, and Linda reports off for a lot of our financial data. That's extremely important. Um, so Linda's going to show you an old Excel file of how we used to report and then how we've transitioned that in Tableau and the benefits that Tableau has given us as an organization. Pamela Jackson. Pamela's actually the newest person on our team. She's been here less than, what, Pamela, four or five months? Pamela is over a training. She does all our training. She does QA for us. She makes sure that we're following the process. So when someone in the business comes and says, I need this tomorrow, Pamela kind of says, hey, hold on. Let's make sure the data is right, make sure we're doing the things we need to do. And then Sean Crenshaw. Sean's been here about a year. Sean supports um, one of our, parts of our parts of our organization that looks at efficiencies and how well are we delivering. Are we giving the customer service to the customer um, based on what they expect? So Sean's going to actually do a live demo, and he's going to show you how we've adapted to mobility and how we strategically built our dashboards, not really to be, be fancy, but we have great visuals, but it's real world where they can go in and, and get the answer whenever they need it. And that's the way we approached it. And then, Wayne Rollins. He's the old man of the group. Sorry, Wayne. <laughs> Sorry. But Wayne's going to get up and he's going to talk about our Tableau environment. So Wayne is our administrator for Tableau. And he's going to show you a little bit about what we're using, how we're leveraging mobility, as well as the reality is we've grown Tableau more than we ever thought. And so we're already making plans to do upgrades and to change the landscape of what we have. Um, so Wayne's going to talk to you about that. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Brian, and he's going to talk to you a little bit more about Consolidated and how we got here. Brian? Thank you, Kevin. So as Kevin was saying, we're a Coca-Cola bottling company Consolidated. So most of you hear Coca-Cola, you see the Coca-Cola, and you say, oh, it's, it's one company. Well, Coca-Cola, the mothership, as I like to call it, is out of Atlanta, and it is worldwide. I mean, they're Coca-Cola. There's Coca-Cola all around the world, and it is all centralized out of uh, Atlanta. However, to actually get the product into the marketplace, Coca-Cola uses bottling companies, and there are many bottling companies even within the U.S. So uh, we are one of those bottling companies, and we cover this particular territory. So we're in the southeast. We're what I would call a medium-sized company. We have about five to 6,000 employees. Uh, we have a lot of data, we have a lot of empl th those employees. Out of that, I'd say most of them, say 60, 70 percent, are people who help us produce it. So we get, uh, we get our, our raw materials, some of our raw materials from Coca-Cola. We mix it up, we've got the production facilities, so we produce it, then we have the warehouses, we have the trucks, we have the Coke machines. So we have you know, a, a lot of assets, we have a lot of the supply chain to work with. So we've got to make that whole process work. Our, uh, our company motto is to make, sell, and deliver Coca-Cola better than anyone else. So that's what we do. And because of that, we are affected uh, by the cost of our raw materials, the cost of our IT infrastructure, and <clears throat> Also, we're affected by the soft drink industry in general. You kind of know that in, in general, the soft drink industry has kind of been flat. People are starting to choose other beverages, so we're starting to, to innovate and, and look for other ways that we can uh, bolster our standard soft drink offer, offering. Well, that challenges our organization. We've got to reduce costs, and we've also got to drive revenue. So we've got to get into our data and find different ways of doing things. So, what this does is it, it causes us to say, you know, hey, right now, or well, back then, we'll say, back then, a few years ago, we had 100 plus systems. We had best of breed systems. We were pulling data in. We had all kinds of analysts and all kinds of different systems. We'd have extract programs and Excel files, as Kevin was saying. 
and we had a lot of inefficiency as we started moving through this process. Well, then we started saying, uh, we need BI. We really need to embrace this concept of BI, and let's streamline this. Let's get it into a database. Uh, let's, and we, we happen to be a Microsoft shop, uh, Excel, right? So I happen to be a Microsoft shop, so we used Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, we started pulling all of this data and centralizing it into our data warehouse, and we really needed a tool to help get that data out. Uh, so Tableau really fit the bill very well because it, uh, it was a good partner with Microsoft. It, <clears throat> it helps us get the data out uh, via views, uh, and as uh, Wayne, Wayne will talk about in a little bit, we had to get speed to market. This was a new concept, and we'd tried a few things before, and they hadn't really gone anywhere. Well, we had to get things out. We, we couldn't have six 12-month-long projects. We had to get things out and get it into the business's hands immediately. Well, Tableau helped with that development, helped with that rapid prototyping so we can get data out and into the hands of our business. And we were able to do that to pull it out, standardize it. We were able to embed our Tableau views into SharePoint and also uh, into the mobile devices. So uh, this is this, we have a, a video here from one of our sales managers. Hi, my name is Brian Allen. I am the Director of Retail Sales with Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. I cover the South Carolina coastal area. I've been a user of Tableau now for a little over a year. I truly enjoy the dashboards, uh, the accessibility uh, and mobility that Tableau provides me to be able to pull up in the field, be it on an iPad or iPhone, information that I need in order to uh, help manage my business. Uh, I can pull up you know, where I'm at versus budget uh, year to date as of this week, as of yesterday, uh, on my iPad on the go or in the office on my, my computer. Uh, it's just a powerful tool. Uh, it lets you dig as deep as you need uh, and I can gather information that two years ago would have took, took me over an hour to get, now I can get in a matter of minutes. Very powerful tool and uh, excited that we've got it here at Co Consolidated. So as you see, Brian gave you how we got to Tableau, as well as Brian, that was just on the video, is showing you his perspective of how Tableau has benefited him. And you will find that same similar story throughout our organization, no matter what level you are at. And that's one reason why we're so excited to sit here and talk to you guys about Tableau. And so, Linda, tell us a little bit about uh, the daily sales report and uh, how much headache it used to cause us. leadership had a lot of questions and they wanted answers. I could provide those answers. I had a data warehouse now with over 200 million rows of data that wanted to be analyzed. I just needed horsepower to move that data. This is an example of a report that we did previously in Excel. This report had a lot of visibility at se from senior leadership and it met the needs but there was a lot of limitations. It wasn't dynamic. It was labor intensive, which meant that there was a great risk for human error. There was 15 data pools from a canned reporting system that we needed to do every day in order to report, update this report. It had a limited uh, level of data just due to the constraints of Excel. It was time consuming to update. It took 45 minutes every day, seven days a week. It was late delivery time. 7.30, which is late for our senior leadership to get a report. And most importantly, it wasn't mobile. Our field folks had to go into the office, pull up the report, print it out, and check out their numbers before they could get out there and sell Coke. Earlier this year, we developed this report into a Tableau dashboard. Besides being much more aesthetically appealing and easier to read, it was 100% automated. It was dynamic. It refreshed daily at 5.30 a.m. every day. It had a low level of data. Field folks and everybody in the company could drill down to the lowest level of data available to see what was going on with the business and then roll it up to see the business at a high level. Most importantly, it was mobile. Now our field folks could just pull it up on, our, on their iPads and see what was going on with the business. But the biggest win of all was that now we were able to actually analyze data and spend, instead of spending a lot of time refreshing reports. All right, so Linda's being very modest. Okay. What? 
This is the one most important report in Consolidate's entire portfolio of dashboards. And so for two years, I had the pleasure to get up every morning around 6, 6.30 and run this report, okay? And so can you imagine getting out of your bed to run a report? If it was the end of the month, I had to run on Saturday and Sundays, okay? And then if it maybe got to 7.35, I get a text message where Robert Chalmers, our senior VP, which you're gonna see shortly, uh, sends a text and says, daily sales, question mark, question mark, question mark, okay? And imagine if I'm still a little sleepy and I don't do the report right or the, the 13 downloads I've done, I don't put them into the template correct. Can you imagine the hell that happens from that, right? Because they're using their report every day to really make decisions. Um, and so with the Tableau dashboard, um, if, if we need to change our strategy, that's different than the budget that we're actually doing now in October, the daily sales report allows you to be able to see that change. The next morning, we can see that change, and we know how to go to market a little better. And then Tableau can also show us the response. We made an adjustment to strategy. Now we can see what happened. We never could have did that before, okay? Um, as well as my wife is extremely happy with Tableau because I don't have to wake her up in the morning to go run a report. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a big change, um, and it's been very, very effective for the organization. At this point, I'm gonna introduce Pamela. So I, I mentioned to you earlier of how seasoned our organization is from an experience standpoint. They don't like change, right? They're used to the Excel files, but how do you help them adapt and help them understand the value that a tool as Tableau would bring to them? So, PJ? So who are our users? Within our organization, we have categorized our users into three different groups. Um, we defined how they look at Tableau and how they use the same data to answer very different questions. Um, first, with our leadership team, um, that would be our CEO, president, senior VPs, um, director of retail sales. This level of the organization is using Tableau for strategic purposes. Um, the data communicated at this level allows the business to view our data to help plan the overall direction for growth and profitability for the company. Tableau answers questions like, are we on track? to meet our objectives? Is the plan working? Do we need to revise something in order to have a strong finish? Our management group, which would be our area sales managers, field distribution managers, supervisors, et cetera, they're using Tableau to coach, train, and develop their employees. The reports give a quick overview of their specific areas within the company from the highest level of data, and they're allowed to drill all the way down to the employee who's responsible for that particular customer. This is an invaluable tool, invaluable tool for the mobile nature of our business because whether we're one-on-one -on -one in the office, in the car, truck, driving around for a on-the-job training, we're able to um, identify our drivers and drains. We can take action on them right then and there while we're in the field. Um, our field group, which would be our sales reps, account developers, delivery merchandisers, they're using um, Tableau to see a quick health check of their business to determine um, how am I doing? What does my portfolio look like? How am I, what do my numbers look like? How do I compare to my peers? Um, Tableau allows them the opportunity to identify and create action plans on how to execute, sell, and deliver. So since our organization has used Excel and similar reports for so many years, adoption to a new way of reporting came with a few challenges. Um, with a mobile sales force, it is important that we establish a process to train in a mobile environment as well as an, an office or classroom setting. So we decided to take an approach which would appeal to three different styles of learning. That would be visual, verbal, and tactile. And we had to have that be accessible from one location. Um, the help button is the link that we use to access our training that the end user can, can adapt to. It's located on each dashboard. It provides information about how to use Tableau and the metrics related to that specific dashboard. The training video is a walkthrough of the metrics. It's just a visual walkthrough of Tableau. It highlights information about how to navigate Tableau. It also provides information on the data sources that are used to create those dashboards, and along with refresh frequencies and other information that's important to the dashboard. Um, for the tactile learner, 
the user can review this video on their laptop and they can follow along on their iPad or smartphone. If the user does not want to use the video, um, there's an attachments tab within our video here, the training video, that allows them to go to an, uh, attachments that are embedded within that video if they want to read additional information. And the documents that are on that attachments tab can be accessed within the video as well. There's a link at the end that will take them to SharePoint, which will give them access to our entire metrics catalog of all the metrics that are defined within Consolidated, as well as a link to the job aid, which is a condensed version of the metrics in one page, a one page document. It gives calculations to the dashboard and just gives them a little bit more insight if for some reason you've got a new employee or a new manager that may not understand the full structure of the business. So Pam, let's share with you guys about how important training is for us and really having a strategic way to approach dashboards, right? You may be telling one analytical story or it may be a management tool that you're building for the organization. You know, Pam, let's show you a lot of great things that we're doing now. Um, but just this morning, because of the Tableau community, we, we saw some training done by storyboarding. And so that's something that we're looking to adapt as well is to take the storyboarding and be able to click and see the videos and the job aids. That's why we love Tableau. Because of the community, you guys being here, we're taking a little bit from everybody, and then we can figure out how that affects our organization. Okay? So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Sean. Now, what I didn't tell you guys was when, when we kind of got into Tableau, Sean had just started with us. So I threw him right in the fire. Uh, so he's probably going to tell you guys a little bit about that. But go ahead, Sean. He threw me right in. No oar, no boat, nothing. Just get in there and swim if you can. You're still living, buddy. <laughs> I'm still living, man. <laughs> so let's get to the stuff y'all really came to see, right? How we're doing the Tableau dashboards on the iPad. But before I get to that, you've heard stories about mobility. Everything's been about mobility. But to really understand where we were and where we are now, I'll have to tell you about what exactly those field guys, the sales guys, the delivery guys had to do. So yes, they had to get up early in the morning and come in on one day and they had to look at all of their information. And it was in different places. SharePoint, Excel files, print out 100 pages from the copier, all of those things. And they had to sit down and look through that information on one day for all day long. Think about that. Our job is to make, sell, and deliver. And what are our guys doing? Looking at paperwork. And so essentially, management had the challenge. How can we give them something that's more efficient and will allow them to execute on the plans that we've given them? Enter Tableau. So we built all of our dashboards to be mobile because our sales force and our delivery guys are mobile. And we wanted to be efficient, quick and easy for them to get to. But at the same time, we had to give them something that reminded them of what they're used to seeing. They have numerous metrics. This dashboard that you're looking at here contains over 20 metrics in it. You don't see it all here because we've broken it out. We have a top line look and we have sub dashboards underneath. And the reason why we did that is because this dashboard here covers not only the selling side, but also the delivery side as well. And we wanted to build something that was seamless, meaning that I can look at it, Kevin can look at it, Ben can look at it, and you can see the same thing. Before, we had the guys in the branch saying one thing, but executives weren't able to see the information they saw. And so we had mismatched information, miscommunication, and that led to stress and led to frustration and those type of things. And so our job is to eliminate that stress and make their jobs easier. And so this dashboard here, the way we've built it, in addition to being seamless, we built it to where it's scalable, meaning that you can look at it at the lowest level or the 10,000 foot level, and it'll tell you the same information. It'll roll all the way up to the top line level. So a top line executive, you want to see how all the areas are doing, you can click on this parameter here and choose all, and it'll show all the areas. So you can see at a high level how his business is doing. And so we typically build our dashboards, like I said, with the iPad in mind and with the idea of being scalable, but also with the idea of being efficient and quick. We can build nice dashboards, but if a guy is in the store and is turning 30 seconds to a minute, that's not helping him make an actual decision. And one good thing that I also can say, as far as the analyst team, you see this dashboard here is built, we've built it, it's pretty much self-sufficient, it runs on its own, where prior to that, we would have over a thousand lines of steps to build something that's not even close to that, a three metric quote unquote dashboard that we put on SharePoint. And so think about all the frustration, all the manual errors that would cause 
by the simple fact somebody's running a process over and over and over again. Like we said before, we're report generators and not true analysts. And so just taking you through this dashboard here, some of the questions that we would typically get. So say I'm a guy, I go into the store, and I would want to know, how am I doing this particular store? How am I selling? So if I'm an account developer, for example, these are the guys that actually go into the store and execute, make sure that we have a customer's orders on time. So it will click on this account developer button in the top right. And so that will turn, and then that will give them additional metrics that pertain exactly to them. And so as you can see, you have four metrics here that they're familiar with. So unscheduled, they let us know, okay, how many times did you schedule something we were supposed to schedule it? How long am I working? How am I doing compared to last year? That's a big key for us. We always like to see how we're doing against the previous year, benchmarking, those type of things. As well as, am I ordering for the wrong day? I'm supposed to deliver on this day, but you place on orders for another day. And so those type of things impact us in a way that we want to measure and track. And the good thing about it is, like I mentioned before, you have a top line look, but we also give the ability to those guys to see details. So you can click on a mark there, drill down, and it shows you underlying detail information as well. So now you have this look here at a detail level showing you exactly by person how, many, how much they're working throughout the day. And then you can slice and dice that by the weekend, by the year, all those type of things. So the good thing about Tableau is they weren't able to get this before. If they wanted this, they had to pull it from different data sources. And the good thing about it, now that they have in one data source, they're able to make decisions much more accurately. And another thing about Tashboard that the Tableau has helped us with is, like I said, we have different data sources. We have stuff in Excel. We have things coming from SAP BW. We have things coming from Power Pivot. So Tableau has allowed us to put all this information in one spot and consolidate it. And another business question that we typically get is regarding how are we doing in terms of shrink? Shrink to us means that how much product are we having to credit it back to the customer? Those Coke cans out there, if we don't sell it, they send it back to us and we give a credit to the customer. That's money out of our pocket. It could have been used for research and development to build more dashboards, those type of things. So that's a big question that the guys are tracking. That's, that's true indeed. That's true. That's true that indeed. happens a lot. And, and to us, that's like a $6 billion cost. So Six they, million, they, not billion. Million. Million. All right, million. That's if right. If billion, we wouldn't be here. Yeah, you're right. You wouldn't be here at all, wouldn't you? <laughs> Ta Tableau can't help that, can it? No. Ben. Ben can't help Lifeline. that six billion with a B. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, we have this visual here that talks about shrink dollars and cases. And it measures actually how we're doing comparing year to year. And the same, we have the recurring theme over and over again when it comes to our dashboards. They have the ability to click on something, it pops up the tool tip, and able to drill through to see underlying information. So as you can see here, when they click on that look, it highlights the mark for them, and they also have the capability to say, okay, I see how I'm doing there. How am I doing month to month, broken down, exactly? So as I mentioned about shrink, shrink is either something damaged, a delivery guy's out there, is on the truck, they fell off the truck, we're responsible for that. It may not have been his fault, he may have been driving just fine, somebody was crazy, he had to swerve out the way, and a bottle dropped and broke. <laughs> You can't feel sorry for that. <laughs> we got to pay for it. And so true. this lets them know how we're doing. And it's by branch. So uh, one branch may be doing well, another branch may be doing poorly. And so now the guys can look at that and see, okay, what's causing, what's driving that shrink number for those guys. So in essence, the thing about Tableau is really allowed us to not only be mobile, but be more efficient. Not only for our guys out there selling and delivering, but also for our team as well. It'll be more analytical and more effective and help the business answer questions they couldn't answer before. Thank you, Sean. All right, so I hope that was helpful to kind of understand how we approach dashboarding. It's a little different. It doesn't have a lot of the pretty visits that, that we could do. And really, we're at the beginning of Tableau. We've only been in two years, and so we took that approach. We wanted to give the organization exactly what they needed to do their job. And next year, we'll try to get real fancy um, and improve. And as Tableau changes, Storyboard and those type of things, we'll start adding that uh, to the dashboards. And so you know, we'll adapt and we'll change as we go. Okay? So at this point, we're going to introduce Mr. Rawless to come up, uh, the young guy. <laughs> yeah, as Brian, as uh, Kevin so unnecessarily pointed out in the introductions, I'm the old guy on the team. And uh, been with Coke for about 15 years came to in Y2K to fix all the broken programs. 
And there's certain disadvantages to being an old guy, especially in this, you know, the, the young environment that, that Tableau is. When they sent out the email saying who all the uh, bands were and who the headliners were for the customer party, I saw Sir Mix a lot. And I made the mistake of putting on my Facebook page that Sir Mix a lot was going to be here. Don't really know who he is, but he sounds important. And my son just reamed me over that. He says, <laughs> Dad, really? You don't know who Sir Mix a lot is? So he sent me the video. And now I know. <laughs> Now I really know. Way. Yeah, I really know. I really know because I watched the whole thing. So, um, so my job, I'm the, the uh, server administrator, and I try to keep the server up and running. I take their complaints. Uh, whenever a 403 error comes up, Kevin sends me a picture of it in an email and says, here, what, what is this, and things like that. So, um, so I'd like to talk to you about the stats. I'm the uh, IS guy, so they give me the the task of giving you all the dry statistics. And so I'll try not to read all of these. You can look at them, but I will call out a couple of things for you. We have 200 unique users a day that are hitting our system. Um, and these are just, they're not, you know, they may be on for five minutes in the morning looking at a daily sales report. They might be on for an hour uh, going through all their the different views and some of the dashboards, but that's 200 users, unique users. And in any given hour, there's usually 40 unique users. Um, they access between 40 and 60 workbooks a day. That's individual workbooks, not the views in the workbooks, the actual workbooks. Um, and they're, we're, we're looking at about a aver daily average of 80 views per hour. And our peak viewing time is between 8 and 10 in the morning. And that's going to be important in a minute because we're going to talk about our extracts. And, uh, you know, because Brian mentioned that earlier, when we went with this um, idea of trying to push this out as quickly as we could and get the dashboards into the hands of the business as quickly as we could, um, we didn't spend six months to a year doing data design ahead. What we did is we started building extracts. And we built extracts for each, sometimes for a single metric. We would build an extract from our EDW for that metric. And that proved to be not such a great idea. Um, extracts are great. And using the data engine on the server is fantastic because you know, it's very fast. You get your uh, answers very quickly. And we love it. But what that does to us is, well, first let me tell you our environment. We just have a, sing we have a single server, a virtual server, single 8-core with 32 gig, um, and we're running a pretty standard out-of-the-box configuration. Uh, the only thing we've done is we've added one extra backgrounder, uh, which is about as much as that box can handle. We also have a development server. All these guys up here, the analysts, they, use, they do all their development and everything on a production server. But we have um, sometimes we have projects. We have uh, outside firms coming in doing the development for us, and they do their work on the development server. We control what gets published to the production server. So this is what our uh, usage pattern looks like every day. Um, each one of those uh, columns is a day. Each one of those dots is an hour in the day, and we're tracking the number of users that we're uh, getting. And as you can see, most uh, days everything fall is falling in between about 25 to 55 users. Um, and if you'll notice, even on the 4th of July, right, we've got 15, up to 15 users in one particular hour. Our senior executives do not take vacation days. They do not take holidays off. They want their reports, their data. They want to see it every day of the year, right? And that you, you, if, if that report's not there on the 4th of July, if that report is not there on Christmas Day, Kevin gets a call, I get a call, right? Yep, waterfall effect. <laughs> So this is our daily extract solid st uh, cycle. This is what our usage looks like um, for our background processors. We've got two backgrounders. So um, we've got two columns per day. And you'll notice that we are doing extracts from 5 or 6 in the morning until 1, sometimes 3 in the afternoon. Now remember I said earlier, our prime viewing time is between 8 and 10 in the morning. We're doing extracts at the same time that people are trying to use the server. 
And if you know anything about extracts at all, you know that they are chewing up a lot of cycles on the server. They're chewing up a lot of memory, and they, it hurts. It, it is impacting uh, the usage of the, of the dashboards on the server. And if you're saying, well, why don't you do your extracts in off hours? Well, part of our sales system is still on a mainframe. And so that does batch processing late at night. We start loading the EDW at 3 o'clock in the morning. And so we can't even start doing any of these loads until after all that processing is finished. So we, can't, we have to do it early in the morning. So what we've decided to do is we're going to upgrade to a high availability system because our executives need access to the data all the time. You know, two hour downtime with the server going down is not acceptable. Um, so we're gonna go with a gateway server. We're gonna have two interactive worker servers uh, running uh, exactly the same uh, setup. Um, we are going to go with an extract only worker server to do all of our background processes to keep that off of the servers that the users are using and uh, hopefully get as many as four backgrounders running so that we can get data ready in, you know, in a more timely manner. And so now I'd like to introduce our uh, VP, uh, Senior VP of uh, Sales and Delivery, uh, Robert Chambliss. Hello, my name is Robert Chambliss and I'm in charge of sales marketing operations for Coke Consolidated. I'd like to take just a moment and tell you uh, what a wonderful tool Tableau has been for our company. We've tried many tools in the past like Power Pivot, and the problem was those tools just couldn't keep up with the workload that we had. Uh, but what Tableau has enabled our company to do is take large amounts of data and be able to break it down all the way to the lowest level line manager in a mo mobile format to where they can do their jobs very efficiently not spend time in the office, but spend time in the street with our customers and our employees coaching and teaching and selling. The primary function of our folks is to sell, and this tool has enabled them to do that in a very mobile format. The best part about it is it's increased our efficiencies in a big way. Uh, what normally would have taken us many, many hours in the office and many, many more people in order to get the work done, we've been able to condense that down. The time frame has gotten really small and they can actually do those things while they're at the account with the customer and with the employee. We're extremely happy with this and now we're investing in Tableau to actually make it move faster and quicker for our folks in the field and we're looking forward to many things to come. Wow, how impactful is that, right? Our one sponsor for BI with our CIO, um, the guy that everything we do is his organization. So to be able to hear how, he, how Tableau has impacted him, to hear it from him is very gratifying for everybody who's on the stage. Um, and that really speaks to what we've done with Tableau in less than two years. All right, so before we close, we want to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the enhancements that we're thinking about, how we're going to continue to focus on training, and then as well as some technology things that we're going to implement as well. So, Sean, Brian, you jump in. So just some of the things that you see on the screen, some of the enhancements that, as you saw in our dashboard, when we have version seven, it was good, but we were limited in what we could do. But with the advent of version eight and the subsequent versions we're gonna move to, we're able to make it more impactful for our business users, make it faster, but also track if we have some underperforming queries. Performance recording has been a big key for us. We use a lot of custom SQL. I know that's kind of you know taboo for us to use, but we use a lot of custom SQL on our dashboards, and so performance recording has really helped us to tweak and streamline our SQL to make sure it's pulling exactly where we want it to pull. The dashboard I showed you guys earlier, floating filters and, and the floating capabilities made that possible. Prior to that, it would've been tough for us to get all those metrics, all those business on the same one dashboard. But since the floating capability came in with eight, we're able to mix and match and move things around and still have it fit within that tight iPad landscape. And the new visualizations with the bubble maps, the tree maps, the heat maps, we're getting there. Even though our, our business likes to use co columns and rows, so to speak, we're adding some flavor to our dashboard. So more to come with those. So with training, as we continue to um, 
increase the overall use of Tableau. We'll continue to make adjustments to ensure complete adoption of the tool within our organization. Collaborating with the end user has been the key and will continue to be the key to our success. We encourage feedback, open communication about the value of Tableau, and we partner with our end users to identify opportunities of what we can do better. Um, we consistently commu communicate enhancements to the current dashboards to do to uh, feedback from our users, uh, performance improvements. We routinely participate in on-the-job training. Um, and we also provide usage reports to highlight our top users and how that translates to the success, the success of their business. Um, these efforts are all part of maintaining full circle communication uh, within all areas of the business and for continued adoption of Tableau, we'll continue to move in that direction. And for us with technology, and this is kind of a, this is a, if you've been to some of the presentations around Drive, the methodology on how to scale, uh, we, when we were initially kicking this off, we did not imagine that it would take off as fast as it did. It really took off and now everybody's trying to get everything into the data warehouse, everybody's trying to get everything into Tableau, and we are having to balance innovation with standardization because we've got IT, they've got to standardize, but we also have to have business self-service. We have to have people to, ha to go out there. So now we are, if you were uh, on the first day, if any of you went to the Cisco presentation, we would love to be in that place to where we have a center of excellence. And we have made it a long way. We've got a, a lot of those drive methodology components, but we don't have a lot of the data stewardship. We don't have a lot of the governance in place. Uh, and we are <laughs> scaling. Uh, as, you know, on the job, uh, live, as we get more and more dashboards. So some of that is that they're saying, hey, look, I want to go from the very top all the way to the bottom. Well, as our data sets get bigger, it's starting to slow down. And a management saying, hey, I, I, this was snappy before. I want snappy. So we're saying, okay, well, how, we've, if, how are we going to do this? We've got to figure out new ways to, rather than extracting it all, I mean, Tableau servers fast and the columnar data stores are fast, but at a certain point, you lose the snappy just simply because you're moving too much data. So we're looking at ways of doing this dynamic filtering to where when you start at a top line, it only has a certain number of rows, so it pulls up. And then based on what you choose, it'll jump to a new data source and then do a live query against the data source that would only pull the records that you need rather than pulling all however many, you know, 200 million or and it's, and it's growing, uh, half a billion records. We don't want to pull all of that out of our data warehouse. As Wayne was talking about, it's killing our performance. So we're trying to get creative about how we can get people to, uh, to navigate through the data and only give them the data that they want to see. Uh, so we're looking at ways of when we standardize cubing that, and also a methodology to say, all right, here's the deal. Uh, business users, you, got, you have the ability to go out and pr produce in production. You can migrate things into production. But after about 60 days or so, you know, that's running in production. It's running on a regular basis. You might need to standardize that. Now you start to enter into the IT standardization process to where IT now reviews that, uh, creates standardized views or potentially cubes and begins to own that SLA. So we're, we're trying to balance the innovation and standardization. <coughs> Interrelated data, uh, as I mentioned before, we have multiple bottlers in the United States, and we're trying to speak the same language. Can you imagine if Walmart gets 50 different invoices with 50 different definitions of master data and those types of things? That's, that's one of the problems with our system, and we are trying to speak the same language. So as we do that, we're trying to connect our data across bottlers. So that's one of our next challenges, and to potentially uh, collaborate and share some of the things that we've been doing with other uh, companies that do the same business. Uh, and that is, those are some of the, the next steps. Also, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is it's an evolution. Some of the things, the technology, the data has come really fast. Other things, like the line graphs and the bar charts, that's going to be really slow. Uh, you know, we try to do heat maps, and everybody's like, Whoa, easy now. Uh, I don't understand the colored squares. Uh, and so our, our, we have to keep our users in mind. 
And uh, even though we see some really cool stuff that you, the other companies are doing, we have to keep our audience in mind and make sure that they can still use the information that, uh, that we present them. Kevin? All right. So we love Tableau. <laughs> um, but no, but really, I mean, we are now, we, our perception now are, is that we're analysts. And that's really what I envisioned two years ago. And that's how the organization sees us. And so we're just at the beginning, right? We hope to be up here again in the future to be able to show you from where we are now to where we're going to continue to go. And it's going to get better and better and better, and we're going to have better and better results. And so thank you guys um, for joining us today. It is open happiness because we're extremely excited about BI and Tableau. So we'll open up for any questions if there's any questions for us. Uh, for, for data governance, that's something that really challenged us because, as you know, with all those Excel dashboards, people would see a number and say, where did this come from? And nobody was really quite sure. So as we went through this process, Tableau has helped push us into the BI world to where we start saying, we need data lineage. So part of what, what Pamela was talking about is that help button. We've got documentation on this particular metric, like you saw one up there, unscheduled. Well, we've got six different ordering systems, all for different areas of our business. And they all get combined into the data warehouse. So we've got that lineage documented to be able to say, unscheduled is a metric that is owned by the director of distribution. So he has a document that says, this is what unscheduled means. I want to include cups and lids. I want to have these kinds of, you know, I want, to, I want the fountain equipment. No, I don't want the fountain equipment. They, they get to define all of that business logic and say, this is the definition of our metric. And we want, as we, go, uh, as we go into the systems that provide that information, I want it from my full service, which is my Coke machines. I want to include it. And we, we identify those source systems. <coughs> the actual applications that do the ordering, they're in charge of owning the accuracy of the data within the application. But when it comes across into the BI world, we have our data owners. And we go through a reconciliation process to say, OK, if I have 100,000 cases in this application system, I've got to have 100,000 cases in my BI system. And then, based on the definition of the metric, I may only have 78,000 in the report, which that's, that's the tricky part is being able to say where you start inserting that business logic so that when you look at the report and it says 78, and you look at the system and it says 100, and people say, well, your report's wrong. Well, no, it's right. It's here's the business logic that tells you why we're filtering out these certain pieces of information. Yeah. You get a soccer ball for that question. Very nice. Very nice. That, that is. No. Well, typically for all the dashboards that you see, we have a rigorous QA process to where we take what's in the source system, like Brian said, but then we have our QA group just compared to what is in there, but also compared to what some other previous reports we have as well. So all the SQL custom SQL that we do, it's not necessarily translating the data, it's just for a given metric, for example. In our EDW, it may have a piece of that metric, but the other piece may be somewhere else. 
And so the custom secret just combining that and presenting it in Tableau. But everything that we have in Tableau has been signed off by the business owner as well as our QA group. Before we publish anything, it's been signed off by both parties. So it's a verified stamp. If they complain about it, it's something that they miss and not something that we missed before we rolled it out. And we can talk offline as well. Yep. Um, uh, in the back, uh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's a live connection. Uh, however, we, we balance that with some of our reports we push out in PDF uh, so that when they're out in the mountains of West Virginia, where there's no self-service, uh, they still have information that they can get to. Another one of our bottlers, uh, maybe speaking right after us, actually has uh, worked with Tableau to do offline navigation where we actually push a packaged data source down to the handheld that allows the end user to do navigation offline. That's something that it's collaboration within the system. We're not doing that yet, but one of our bottler, uh, bottlers within the system is doing that. We're looking to learn from it. Right here in the blue. I think that goes back to what Sean was saying, is when they, when they go publish it, there's a guy who owns it, or a person who owns that report or metric, and the, the analyst groups it doesn't publish it unless they've vetted that with the guy who can look at it and say, that doesn't pass the smell test. Uh, and so we, we go through uh, rigor to try to prove to our, our business owners that the data that they're looking at is correct. Right in the front. So, is this uh, just for your no, actually, um, so we're sales delivery, so we're the, pretty much the main users, but we do have a supply chain that's starting to um, evolve to Tableau, as well as we have a sub subsidiary company, a trucking company, that's also using Tableau as well. Yeah, it's it, we, with everyone. yeah that, everyone that, has pretty that much the ability to That you saw earlier, mm -hmm. yep. we're covering all of those territories. Now, Correct. there are other states, right, in the United States. Those are other bottlers, and there's right. another uh, Coca-Cola Refreshments is, is another Coca-Cola bottler, and they have different technology. They're using Tableau as well. They're, they are doing what I referred to earlier, where they're actually pushing out uh, packaged data sources package workbooks out to the handheld to like a tough book and they're doing the analysis right there. So they have a little bit of a different approach uh, but within that area that we talked about within our area at Consolidated this is the approach that we're using. But essentially everyone in our organization can see our dashboards if they have yep. the right approval level. Correct. Well. No, I, nope, nope. I, I, I think that's a good question. Um, we kind of, sales delivery kind of jumped out first. And so we're trying to take our learners and share that across different departments. And so we actually create an analyst collaboration committee where every department comes in, we kind of share best practices, what we've learned, standardization. Um, so that was kind of a process that started from Tableau. Because what we, what we wanted to happen was if a user over here uses Tableau, they don't have to necessarily relearn Tableau to look at a supply chain report. And so that's why we can create that unique committee to be able to have collaboration. We never had that before, and so that's one of the practices we incorporated. Right behind you, uh, yeah. It's about connecting live. Yeah, we, we're still in the midst of that. Oh, sorry. Run. The question was, was there, a, correct me if I got it right, is that was there a certain size kind of cutoff to where you'd say, hey, look, we'll do an extract on this, 
or we'll do this live, but at a certain size, we'll actually go towards an extract versus live. Is that? That's where we are right now. Right. Where our extracts are getting so big that they're killing our performance. Right. And that's, that's what the, one of those next steps is we're now starting to figure out once they get bigger than that particular size. And right now, like our, our budget versus actuals at a customer level is over 200 million records. That's and good. when you do, and it's, it's kind of wide too. It's not, <laughs> we got a lot of attributes in there. Uh, so when we load that in, that's where we're starting to hit those performance things. So we're starting to say, hey, maybe this is better as a cube. Let's connect live as opposed to doing the, the, the relational extract. Uh, or, hey, let's, as I talked about earlier, let's do this as a dynamic query and only get the data that the person's looking for. All right, we'll, we'll, take, we'll, we'll take one more question. I know people are coming into the room. Right there. So uh, right here in the right back. There, oh, right there. Oh, sorry, the jacket here. We'll take one more question. Then we'll, we have business cards. You guys yep. want to reach out. We can talk. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that, Brian. Okay. Really, the honesty is it was about the need. So we need we had a need to get these guys availability to be able to do what, what they do best, and that's being analysts. And so we had to we had to really replace the manual stuff in order for us to to be able to look at all the new things that Tableau can allow us to do, forecasting, trend lines, and all that. That's where we are now. And so we spent the last two years to get to this place. And so now we're looking forward to utilizing all that BI capability and these new tools to be able to do better analysis. It's just part of the journey. Um, that's where I want to go. That's where I'm going to push my team to go. But it's just a part of the journey. So that's why we're not there yet. But that was very strategic, the, the approach we took. Thank you, guys. Thank you.